Hello! Welcome! You're tuned in to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 531. Today, we're talking about martial arts as a lifestyle versus martial arts as a hobby. Pretty sure you can guess which side of that line I come down on. Martial arts is not only a lifestyle for me, it is my life. I am Jeremy Lesniak, I'm your host for the show, founder of Whistlekick, and I absolutely love the traditional martial arts. In fact, if you want to see how much I love the traditional martial arts, go to whistlekick.com. Look at all the things that we work on as a company, from this show to the other shows that we do, to the other things that we put together, sponsor, assist with, support, including our store. Yes, there's a store at whistlekick.com, and if you use the code PODCAST15, you're going to save 15% off everything that we've got over there. This show gets its very own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, because we keep the names easy if you go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's where you'll find individual pages for every single episode we've ever done. We include photos and links and transcripts, as well as videos, and slowly we're working on putting together a new format of our episode list. Yes, you can go, you can check out a list of all the episodes. We tag them, we sort them, it's, it's, there's categories, it's, it's good stuff. If you're a fairly new listener to the show, I would urge you, go to that website, because that's going to help you track down which older episodes are of most interest to you. Of course, there is a special place in my heart for people who come in, let's say, later to the party, and go back and listen to every single episode. I hear from you folks all the time, it blows my mind, and... I don't know how anybody can listen to my voice that often, but hey, thank you. I appreciate the support. Why do we make the show? Because we're looking to connect, educate, and of course, entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world. If that means something to you, if the two episodes a week we put out mean something to you, if you want to support them, make sure that they stick around. Yes, this is the PBS pledge drive portion of the show. You can help us out in a lot of ways. You can make a purchase at the store. You can share an episode, do all those sort of supportive social media type things, or you can support the Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. That's where you want to go for that. You can support us monthly for as little as $2 a month, and at the $2 tier, you get extra blog posts. $5, you get exclusive audio. $10, video, and it goes up from there. The more you're willing to share with us, the more we're going to share with you. And the stuff that we share with our Patreon supporters is not found anywhere else. Okay, the episode. Martial arts as a lifestyle versus martial arts as a hobby. This came up as I was helping a friend who's working on putting together a martial arts event in the next few weeks. And I noticed that as I was writing out a long message about things that I saw that still needed to be done, I found myself saying something that I've said quite a number of times. I've said it on this show and we haven't really done an episode on this, at least not that I remember. This is one of the dangers of being in the 500s that my memory doesn't always serve me. So hopefully I'm not unpacking an old issue in entire, but even if I am, you know what? My thoughts on this stuff change. So it's okay that we might revisit something. Anyway, the thing I was saying to my friend was, you know, we both remember the old days when all you had to do to get martial artists to attend an event was have an event. And now the world is so busy. There are so many outlets and avenues clamoring for our attention, our energy, our effort, our time, our money, that we really have to make martial arts events compelling to get martial artists to show up. Now, there will always be martial artists who go above and beyond. These are the people who drive 8, 10, 15 hours to come to a whistle kick event. These are the people who train in three different schools at the same time and listen to martial arts radio while they're driving in between. And people who, when they do their laundry, half of it are their training uniforms. Those are people who love martial arts and it invades every aspect of their day. And then, you have people for whom martial arts is a hobby. It's something that they go and they do a couple times a week. And maybe they enjoy it. Maybe they like it. It fits into their life. Their life doesn't fit into it. And I think that's the important distinction. 
when we talk about something as a lifestyle, it is the flavoring, the coloring of your life. A martial arts lifestyle means your life is about martial arts. Now, that doesn't mean it's the only thing it's about. It doesn't mean it is solely dedicated to your training, but it is something that you rest your life on. It is one of the legs of the chair that is you. I'm going to guess that for almost everyone out there listening, martial arts is part of your lifestyle. If it wasn't, there's a pretty low chance that you'd be listening. Yet I'm sure you know some people for whom martial arts is a hobby. It's an activity. It's something that they do once in a while. Maybe even people who do more than you might think. And I think it's important to understand why and also recognize that it's okay. Martial arts doesn't have to be the sole purpose of your life. It doesn't have to be the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning. It doesn't have to be your job. It doesn't have to be on your bucket list to open a martial arts school. You don't have to want to go to the Shaolin Temple or train in Okinawa or earn a particular rank or train with a certain person. None of that is necessary. You can live a long, healthy, fulfilling life, going to class a couple times a week and making some friends and getting some movement and enjoying your training. That is perfectly acceptable. And I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not judging that in any way. I think you all know how I feel about training. I want everyone to train. I want everyone to have six months of martial arts under their belt at some point in their lives. I think that would make the world a better place. And I don't think there's anything else that we can do that would as smoothly, as simply move the world forward. And yet there are people out there for whom martial arts is their lifestyle and they can't empathize with it being anything else for others to the detriment of those other people and people who might be interested in training. Let's say you're someone for whom martial arts is your lifestyle. It is the focus of what you do. Maybe you work a desk job, but when you're not at work, you're training or you're thinking about training. And a lot of the memes that we put up on Instagram and Facebook are about you, right? You feel like you identify and maybe even sometimes attacked by these jokes that we put up about people who train constantly. And let's be honest, they're, they're good hearted and I'm in the same boat as any of you when we put that stuff out. So don't worry about that. What about the person who's nervous about becoming that? About feeling judged by others? Maybe they just want to learn some self-defense and get some exercise. They don't want to go to competitions. They don't want to spend all their disposable income on uniforms and whistle kick tees. They just want to go train. If all we put out there are people who are constantly training, you know, the, the, the hyper-passionate people, that might scare them away. Maybe that's fine with you. It's not fine with me. See, this is another example of how martial arts eats its own tail. If you think about the snake eating its own tail, we do this. We have people out there who will judge and say, oh, that person only trains a couple times a week. They're not serious. That person's never competed. They're not serious. So what? Why do you have to be a serious martial artist? Why can't you just be a martial artist? What if that person overcame time constraints, financial constraints, anxiety constraints, just to show up one class a week? I think we should support that. I think we need to recognize that martial arts as a hobby is just as valid as martial arts as a lifestyle. You've heard me say it before. Martial arts gives back exactly and only what you put in. If you put in a couple days a week, you get some good stuff out of it. If you put in more, you get more. But what's wrong with not getting more? What's wrong with a couple days a week, a day a week, two days a month? See, I take you back to my original belief that that person training 
with friends every few months in their backyard is better off and the world is better off than if they weren't. This is where some people make the argument, yes, but they're going to think that they have better self-defense. Stop. Stop. That's not what I'm talking about. Martial arts is not the same as self-defense. Martial arts is not equivalent to your ability to defend yourself on the street. And I don't know anyone who thinks that, except for the people who get wrapped around the axle when the conversation somehow inevitably shifts there. Like most things, your martial arts participation and involvement is somewhere on a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, we have someone who maybe doesn't even like martial arts, but they found it to be the best choice for them for physical activity, for exercise. That's all it is to them. They go, they train, they sweat. Maybe they have some fun while they're there and they don't think about training at all in between classes. They don't think about martial arts. They don't even talk about it with their friends. They're just something they do. The same way somebody might go to the gym and walk on a treadmill. I don't know anybody who gets excited about walking on a treadmill. There's probably somebody out there. But to them, that's that's what it is. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got someone who rolls out of bed, puts on their uniform, trains, showers, goes to work at some sort of martial arts job, trains on their lunch break, probably takes some classes or teaches classes in the evening, and finds themselves lingering in the training space because it's their favorite place and one of their favorite times of the day. I know a couple people like that. I'm not one of them. See, as much as I love martial arts, and martial arts is the major component, the biggest piece of my lifestyle, it's not the only thing in my life. And I'm okay with that. Martial arts gives back exactly and only what you put in. So we can only take from it what we have available to dedicate. And as long as we as individuals are okay with that, that's all that matters. Cancel culture has gone very far. I'm recording this in 2020. And there are things that I find myself not posting on social media. Because all I can imagine are the attacks, the opinions of people that some are my friends, some are not saying, well, you're doing it wrong because you're not doing it my way. Because that's what really, that's what it comes down to. And my hope as you're listening to my words today is that you will realize that wherever you fit on this spectrum of martial arts as lifestyle versus martial arts as hobby, you'll be okay with it. And you're probably going to shift over time. You'll have times where martial arts is less of your lifestyle and times when it's more. You'll have times where you become disillusioned with your training and maybe it becomes a hobby for a little while. Most importantly, though, I don't want you to judge others for where they fit on that spectrum. If martial arts is something you're, you're kind, of, kind of digging, and if 10 is the craziest, most passionate martial artist you can imagine, and you're a four, I don't want you to look at somebody who's an eight and say, you know, that person needs more diversity, more depth in their lives. And if you're that eight, I don't want you looking at the four saying, that person really needs to train more. They're wasting their time. Because they're not. Because martial arts provides us the opportunity to invest ourselves via time and energy and thought into becoming a better person. And we all have different places on our personal path. And that progression as a martial artist, as a human being, is going to be at a different rate because we all have different goals, different resources, different upbringings. Our paths are unique. And it is unfair to judge anyone else anywhere on their path and say they're in the wrong spot. Sometimes I take flack from the traditional martial arts community for saying it is inappropriate to define what is and is not a martial art. 
it doesn't matter. If it leads someone along their path and they're getting some value out of it, so be it. Could there be downside to it? Sure. Is that up to you to worry about? I don't think so. I don't want to see a world where we have martial arts police, people who go around saying, you know, what you teach sucks, so uh, we're shutting down your school. I don't want that. Hopefully you don't want that. Some of you out there want that. And hey, you know what? You're entitled to your opinion there. I am so free market when it comes to martial arts, I'm not even going to tell you you're wrong with that. I'm just telling you, I hope it doesn't happen. We are where we are supposed to be, whether it comes to martial arts or not. And if you live a martial arts lifestyle, I want you to think about what that means to you. How does your martial arts training come with you into the world? How does it impact your choices through the day? How does it affect what you wear and who you talk to and what you eat and what you think about, what you watch and well, what you listen to? If you weren't a martial artist, you'd probably not listen to this show. I know there are a few people out there who don't train who listen to this show, people that I know personally. That's awesome. My hope is that someday you will train. I know that there are people who stopped training who listen to this show, who started training again. That's great. For many of you, listening to martial arts radio is part of your martial arts lifestyle. But for others, and there aren't too many of you listening, martial arts is just a thing you do. And that's okay. I'm fully supportive of that. In fact, I've had people come up to me and say, well, you know, I just go to class a couple times a week and, and they feel, they seem to feel guilty. I don't care. <laughs> I'm totally good with it. I'd rather you train in that way than never. We're not at all. We're less. You do what works for you. Because we're all given a little bit of time on this rock and we've got to make the most of it. And to pretend that martial arts is the only thing in life that could matter to you is just silly. So there you go. Martial arts as a lifestyle versus martial arts as a hobby. Do you have follow-up? Do you have thoughts? Did I get it wrong? Did I get it right? Let me know. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and fill out a comment. We haven't had any comments over there in a while. You can leave comments on YouTube. You can leave comments on social media. We're at Whistlekick everywhere. They're all over the place. And of course, you can do those things. Those help us. Believe it or not, leaving comments helps us. Leaving us reviews helps us. And if you want to help us in other ways, you can make a purchase at whistlekick.com. And if you want to save some money, use the code podcast15 to save 15% or support the Patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash whistlekick. If you see somebody out in the world wearing something with whistlekick on it, make sure you say hello, become their new friend, and maybe you'll have somebody else you can punch in the face. If you have guest suggestions or other comments or feedback, just email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Now, if you're hearing this, it means you listened all the way through to the end. And I'm going to start doing this once in a while. Because I'm, I'm nervous that some of you don't listen to the end. Unlike a lot of shows, we don't pre-record these canned intros and outros. You'll notice that they're a little bit different every time. I have some notes that I work from. That's my paper. It just helps me to make sure that I don't, I don't miss stuff. And I still miss stuff. I don't think I mentioned that you can sign up for a newsletter today. So what? I'll get that next time. Now, here's a little bit of context for today's episode. I took a few days off. I took Thursday off, most of Thursday, and I was off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And this is something I was really thinking about. I didn't train. I think I threw two kicks in four days. Didn't do any forms. Didn't spar. Hung out with some martial arts friends. That was it. And I'll be honest, I've been judging myself 
about whether or not I'm living a martial arts lifestyle. And so today's episode, in case you couldn't tell by that statement, wasn't really for you. That was for me. A lot of what I do with these shows is for me. Because it's what I need to hear myself say. I need to hear myself say that it's okay that I'm not training five days a week right now. It's okay for me to say that I'm barely training at all. I spend a lot of time thinking about martial arts because I spend a lot of time thinking about whistle kick. And the line for me between whistle kick and training is really blurry. So it's my hope that as I work on not judging myself, you'll do the same for yourself and for others and recognize that martial arts, if it is part of your lifestyle, it is part of your lifestyle. It informs who you are. It guides your decisions. And how that shows up in your life today is based on the training that you've done in the past. I know I'm a better person because of my training. I know that while some may look at the very small number of hours going into my training right now and, and judge me harshly for that, I know that even on my worst days, I am still more of a martial artist than I would be without that training, without that history. So I'm giving myself permission to just be. Thanks for listening to this addendum. And uh, if you got this far, let me know. All right.